My job is to give y'all what y'all want. Whenever I make a video about systemic racism towards black people in this country, a nameless, faceless account posts in my comment section, what about black on black crime? Little do they know that when I first got this job, the one topic that I was eager to discuss was and is the myth of black on black crime. Now you, the typical TYT viewer, knows what time it is. But maybe you have a racist parent or pal or politician who believes this myth. Bring them over, sit them down, show them this, tell them that I like their nice American flag shirt. While much of the focus of death and gun violence in this country has been on black boys and men killing ourselves, rightfully so, don't do so at the expense of another demographic that's suffering. Make sure to watch till the end. Let's start with the FBI's Uniform Crime Report, which relies on reporting from precincts all over the country, but not all of them participate. But we'll pretend that they do and the UCR is 100% reliable. It's the best we got. Well, not this one. As you can see, this data is for arrests and we know that black people are much more likely to be exonerated for murder. With that said, this expanded homicide table might work best, although this displays single victim, single offender. With that out of the way, you divide the race of the offender by the corresponding race of the victim and for decades now, you get a black on black crime rate at or around 94% and a white on white crime rate at around 86% depending on your source. Let's get into why there is a disparity and what goes behind the 13% of the population accounts for 52% of the homicides thing. There is a link between violent crime and poverty. Poverty does not cause crime, but there is a correlation. We know this from studies, not just raw data, like this one from The Ohio State University from 1996 that assessed census and crime data in and around neighborhoods of Columbus. They concluded that extremely disadvantaged neighborhoods have unusually high rates of crime and local structural disadvantage is equally important in influencing crime in black and white neighborhoods. Racial differences and structural disadvantage accounted for black, white differences in crime across communities. Census tracts included poverty, male joblessness, female-headed households, and a lack of professionals in the neighborhood. Although social disadvantages considered here are not the only factors contributing to higher rates of black violence in black neighborhoods. Oh, and clearly the rate of poverty in those living in destitute living conditions is higher in black neighborhoods than white neighborhoods. We could talk about why that is some other time. Switching from just homicide to violent crime overall, which includes murder in addition to rape, sexual assault, robbery, and assault, the percent of violent victimization shows that crime among white people and black people are close. Or how about the household poverty and non-fatal violent victimization survey, which said that persons in poor households have more than double the rate of violent victimization as persons in high income households. Also, persons in poor households had a higher rate of violence involving a firearm compared to persons above the federal poverty line. The overall pattern of poor persons having the highest rates of violent victimization was consistent for both whites and blacks. However, the rate of violent victimization for Hispanics did not vary across poverty lines. Lastly, poor urban black people had actually a slightly lower rate of violence than poor urban white people. Also, rich people are less likely to report violent victimization, so there's that. And I'm not trying to suggest that there should be a term for poor on poor crime and, as you already saw, by far the vast majority of homicides are committed by men. And we wouldn't dare say man on man crime. Look, statistics show that a complex issue like homicide is more likely to take place when there's access to firearms, during conflicts, and when drinks are involved. So. Since neighborhoods are segmented by race and our friends and family most often look like us, we're prone to kill someone who has our skin color living around us, whether it's by choice or circumstance. This phenomenon is called proximity killing. I mean, people don't typically bring up black on black crime out of a concern for black communities. It's not that people care if we kill ourselves. Black proximity crime is brought up to deny us rights, respect, and resources. Here's a consistency check. Let's see how much people care about gun violence and death. As I alluded to earlier, there's a demographic that kills themselves at an alarming rate. I think it's more than young black men. It's middle-aged white males who commit suicide. How often do you talk about deaths of despair? And why does this phenomenon get a name that's not tied to race? And if you attribute despair to mental health concerns, depression, loneliness, isolation, etc., where was that the previous four minutes? For Rebel HQ, I'm Jeff Wiggins. My architect knows Japanese. For more from the Young Turks, stay right here. 
If you want to see content from yours truly, click on the hashtag below. I can also be found on all socials at he gonna be all right. Thanks for watching.